Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. Today's video is going to be a classic makeup YouTube trend, the half drugstore, half high-end video. So half of my makeup is drugstore and half of it is high-end. Um, so let me give you a close look. Which side do you think is drugstore? Which side do you think is high-end? So uh, there's this side of my face. And there's this side of my face. Let's get my hair out of it. This is my bad side. <laughs> so, which side do you think is more expensive? Which side do you think is cheaper? Um, I'm actually like surprised that I got them to look remotely similar, to be honest. Let's get into my bare face. Okay, so let's get started with the dupe. So, as always, I'm going to start with my eyes, my concealer dupe, which I'll be using on the rest of my face as well, but I am going to use it as an eyeshadow base. Bit of a boring one, I feel like loads of people have already made this comparison, but um, the Tarte Shape Tape is the high-end one, and the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer as the dupe and I think this is a dupe that is like actually a dupe though like I don't really feel like I prefer one to the other here I feel like these are basically the same quality they've both got like full coverage they've both got the same sort of like formula I know some people do find both of these quite drying so if you have got super dry skin maybe I wouldn't recommend these but if you've got like normal to oily skin then I definitely would recommend these. I personally love them just because they are so full coverage. Um, so this is going to be the high end side. This is going to be the drugstore side. So uh, the shade of the shape tape I've got is fair, which matches me pretty well, but it doesn't brighten or anything. Whereas my um, Elf Camo Concealer is in fair warm, and this is like a um, brightening shade, as you should be able to see. That's significantly lighter than the. Uh, Tarte one. When I do my facial concealer, I'm going to add in another drugstore dupe to, because I can only use the e.l.f. one under my eyes. Alright, let's blend that in. Um, so for powder, I've got the key pressed powder and a loose powder dupe, but to set my eyelids down I want to use pressed powder, but obviously I'm going to use these on the rest of my face as well, later in the video. Uh, so for my high end side I've got the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish, um, natural, in the shade Light. It's just like this, this is actually a tiny bit dark for me, so that's why I'm going to, so I'm going to use it like on my outer parts of my face, but I'm not going to use it under my eyes. And then I would say my dupe for that would be the Bell Hypoallergenic Matte Powder. This is in, I think the shade 02, I can't see it written on here, but this is a very similar colour um, to the MAC one, and that is like a tiny bit dark for me. I'd say the MAC one's maybe got like a tiny bit more pigment. But other than that, I feel like they're pretty similar. Also got the uh, MAC um, Studio Fix um, Powder Foundation, which is the one that's got like a bit more like coverage to it. Um, and I would say a decent dupe for that one would be the Revolution Conceal and Define Satin Matte Powder Foundation, which is recent to my collection. I would also consider those to be dupes shades. Uh, the Revolution was like a tiny bit lighter, um, but yeah. Those are quite similar as well, that's another pressed powder dupe there. Don't, both of those have got like a bit of like kind of coverage to them, they're quite thick powders. I'm going to use the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish to set the set the Tarte Shape Tape down. I feel like the um, MAC one has a lot more like kickback in it, whereas the Bell one doesn't actually have a lot of kickback. And using the Bell powder on the other eye, I don't know... So you can get Bell products on Amazon in the UK. I don't know like what countries they're available in. I assume that they are available in more than just the UK. I'd have to look into that, but hopefully it is international. Okay, so for eyeshadow, my high-end product is the um, Be Perfect Carnival Stacey Marie XL palette, this bloody massive thing here. Um, I would say my dupe is, um, this is actually the most recent eyeshadow palette in my collection, it's the uh, Patricia Bright Rich in Colour palette from Revolution. I think that this is £20, I do think it occasionally goes on sale for like 10 so I'm not really sure of it, but either way it's still like half the price of the um, Stacey Marie one, so. And I do feel like there are similar colours in here, obviously the um, Be Perfect one's got more shades in it, but I do feel like, you know, there's a similar sort of colour story going on. Um, 
I did sort of do a practice yesterday and it did not go well. I feel like my base and everything went great for this, but my eyeshadow, not so good. So I'm gonna try and actually do something good here. I'm using the shade called Keen, which is a yellow in the Stacey Marie palette. And then I might add like a little bit of the matte white into it as well, just because um, the yellow in the Patricia palette is a bit, it's a bit more, it's not pastel, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just got a bit more of a whitey tone to it, let's just say that, because I don't know how to describe colors. Okay, and I'm just gonna put that for the crease to start with. As I said, I don't especially know what I'm doing. Okay, so in the Patricia Bright palette, uh, I'm gonna use the Vitamin C, which is the yellow here. Um, I'm gonna apply this first, and then I'll let you know which one's better quality. <laughs> I would say that the Be Perfect one's like a tiny bit more pigmented. I feel like I needed to build the Patricia one a bit more. I am just wiping my brushes between each shade so it's not like mixing or anything. Um, like overall I feel like it looks pretty identical now. But yeah, I'd say the Be Perfect one's a tiny bit pigmented. Tiny bit more pigmented. But overall I think they're both decent yellows. Okay, so in the Be Perfect palette I'm going to use the shade Make Waves, which is like a dark blue. This one here. And then I'm going to mix it with a bit of the more turquoise colour called Showboat. Here, I'm just going to kind of mix those two together and put that under the yellow. Okay, and I'm going to mix together uh, Backstage in the Patricia Bright palette. And then the more turquoise one called Rich Rich. I'm going to just tap those two together um, and do the same thing. I feel like it's come out a bit more greeny on this side, or it's just a bit more blue, so I might just tap a little bit of um, Trendsetter, which is the green in the Patricia Bright palette. Just a really tiny bit of that over it, just so it sort of matches a bit more. Now I'm going to use the shade Influence, which is a sort of ready pinky colour, in the Be Perfect palette. And I think I'm going to put this in the outfit. I'm going to use Pillow Talk in the Patricia Bright palette. Alright, I think I'm going to cut the crease now because I don't really know what to do from this point because this this is... I, I just feel like I'm spending so much time trying to find shades that are like dupes for each other that I'm not really thinking very much about how the eyeshadow actually is going to work out. Uh, let's use our Tarte Shape Tape. Um, I'm going to cut the crease on this side. Right, I'm going to use a bit more of the same pink influence and put that in the outer third. That's the idea. I think I might put a little bit of purple in as well. So I'm going in with Wasted, the shade here. And I'm putting that next to the pink. Right, in the inner part, I'm going to use the matte white called Pillow Talk. It's not two shades called Pillow Talk we've used now. Um, but I'm going to mix it with a bit of the sort of um, goldy shimmer shade called Fair Play just because the um, the white and the Patricia palette's got shimmer in it but then the shimmer by itself is a bit too yellowy in this Be Perfect palette so I'm adding the matte white to sort of get yeah, I don't know does that make sense probably not um, but that's gonna go in the rest of that cut crease and using the same um, white mixture. I'm going to put that under the brow bone. Again, I'm going to use the e.l.f. concealer to cut the crease. So again, I'm using the pink in the e.l.f. third, the same one I've used already, Pillow Talk. 
this guy here. Then I'm using the purple and the Patricia palette, which is Queen, which is this one here. And that's going in the same place, obviously. And using the white shimmer shade, which is literally called Shimmery. Um, same place. Okay. Okay, I think that's the finished eyeshadow. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the expensive side. This is the cheap side. I do think overall the expensive, the Be Perfect one did turn out a bit better. I feel like it looks a bit more blended well. This one, I feel like I did struggle. I struggled with the pinks and the purples a bit uh, in the outfit, but I don't know, I might faff off it a bit later. But overall, I think, you know, the vibrancy is pretty on point. So I definitely would say if you don't want to spend the money on the Be Perfect one because it's ridiculously expensive, it's £42. Maybe try out the Patricia Bright one. I have gotten some really nice looks with the Patricia one. Um, I'll put some pictures on the screen of some of the looks, probably very fast. Um, but I have actually got some really nice looks of it. So, so for eyeliner for the waterline, I only have one high-end one in my collection. Um, it's the Sigma Longwear Eyeliner Pencil. I think it's only like about £11 though, so it's not really like super expensive. Um, but I would say a dupe for it, and in my opinion I actually prefer this one, uh, the Maybelline Tattoo Gel Pencil is getting quite small now because I use it a lot. Uh, this is actually a bit more pigmented in my opinion. Did both last pretty well. I think the Maybelline one does last a bit longer to be fair. Um, they both do kind of gather in my inner corner. I find that all eyeliner pencils, if I put them in the waterline, I just find by the end of the day they gather in my inner corners. It's a real problem that I have but I feel like they both kind of do it equally. To be fair maybe the Maybelline one's a little bit better but um, I still just prefer the Maybelline one because it's a bit more dramatic. Um, the Sigma one is actually a twisty up one, but then it's still got the sort of like cold pencil appearance. So I'm gonna pop that on this waterline. Right, and Maybelline Tattoo. Pretty much got the same effect going on there. Mascara is the only thing I can't dupe just because I don't have any high-end mascaras in my collection. They generally don't really buy high-end mascaras just because I feel like there's so many really good drugstore ones that what's the point. The dupe that I can think of off the top of my head is I remember trying the Bad Girl Bang Mascara from Benefit around the time it came out like two years ago or whatever um, but I feel like the Collection Last Surge is a really good dupe for that one and the Collection Last Surge is like $4.99 in my opinion it's like the best mascara out there drugstore high end like definitely you need to buy the collection last surge but I feel like that is a good dupe for the Benefit Bad Girl Bang because I think they have a similar sort of wand. But I don't have a dupe so I'm just going to put on the Maybelline uh, Lash Lift Falsies Mascara on both eyes. Alright so moving on to base makeup so primer. Um, so the only high-end primers I have in my collection are, I've got a load of Figs and Rouge ones because when I had a cohort in Beauty Box we always got Figs and Rouge primers in those. Um, and I've got a couple little mini Too Faced ones. Um, I'm going to use this Figs and Rouge Light Reflective Brightening Primer and Illuminator Illuminator for my um, high-end option and then I'm going to use the Barry M Glowmance Soft Focus Primer as my dupe. I mean, I guess they're kind of similar because they're both sort of illuminating primers. Um, the Fix and Rouge one's got like a sort of rose gold sort of colour, whereas the Barry M one is um, like a sort of butterscotchy caramel kind of colour. Um, but they don't leave like a tint on your face or anything, so I, I feel like they have a similar sort of effect. They just kind of give you like a subtle illumination. They both just sort of give you the illumination, the glow, that sort of thing. Yeah, so moving on to foundation, I feel like this is a pretty good dupe. So for high end, I've got the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. And then for my dupe, I've got the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. I think these are pretty similar. And when I tested these out uh, yesterday when I was practicing this video, I generally think that they look 
really similar. They both sort of kind of dry down to a more matte finish. They've both got like really good coverage. I would say they're like high medium buildable to low fall coverage kind of coverage. Um, and they both have like the same sort of wear as well and that they wear really well. So I do actually feel like these are like pretty similar on all accounts to be honest. The only issue is I do need to mix both of them. I have to make the Estee Lauder one a bit darker and the Maybelline one a bit lighter. <laughs> so I'm going to put a bit of this LA Girl um, Pro Mixing Pigment. This is the yellow one. Putting a bit of that in with my Estee Lauder. The shade is 0M1 Alabaster. It's just a tiny bit too light for me. Alright, that'll do for Estee Lauder. Okay, so my Maybelline foundation is in True Ivory. It's a little bit dark and it does oxidise quite a bit, so I'm putting in some, my gosh, mix and fix white foundation drops. Okay, we've still got this very annoying line going down the middle of my face because I can't get them to blend into each other <laughs> properly. I, I, I just generally do feel like these foundations are incredibly similar, so again, if you haven't got the money to spend on Estee Lauder Double Wear, try the Maybelline Super Stay. Very similar in my opinion. Okay, so back to concealers, uh, Tarte Shape Tape. Again, this just sort of matches me. It doesn't really brighten or anything like the e.l.f. one does, but so I'm just gonna put it kind of everywhere I want a bit more coverage. And we've already got pretty good coverage from the foundation, so that'll do. Okay, so I'm gonna put the e.l.f under my eye on this side. Uh, so for my other shape tape dupe, I'm going to use the Revolution Concealer and Define Infinite um, Concealer just to put on my nose and just around my mouth here, just because this is a bit darker than the e.l.f. one. I do feel like it's similar to the shape tape, um, I feel like I do prefer the shape tape over the infinite one but i do quite like the infinite one i will admit it will be in an updated makeup review at some point i don't know when that's going to be because i've lost track of what's going on in life to be honest like what month is it what day is it i have no idea okay so moving back to powders um so i'm going to use a loose one under the eyes uh, so i've got the fenty beauty um pro filter powder in Lavender and my sort of dupe for this would be uh, the L'Oreal Infallible Magic Loose Powder purely because the Fenty Beauty one has got a little bit purple in it This has got a little bit of blue in it and that's that's close enough for my liking um, I'm not actually sure if I have anything left in my L'Oreal one, but hopefully I do because um, I don't really have another dupe. <laughs> These will just give us a tiny bit of brightness I guess. Um, I actually feel like I prefer the L'Oreal powder. The L'Oreal powder is actually one of my favourite powders um, it just, I don't know, I don't know, but I feel like I always have issues with the Fenty Beauty powder going a bit patchy on me. Does anyone else have this problem? Whereas I don't really get that problem with the L'Oreal powder. So I'm going to use my little fluffy sponge, because this is really good for setting under the eyes. Let's get any product off that. Alright, so I'll start with the Fenty Beauty one. Just going to tap out all those creases, and I'm just going to do the under eye. Okay, so moving on to the little teeny tiny amount of L'Oreal powder I've got left. I definitely need to buy a new one of these. This is definitely the sort of powder that I would rebuy. I like it that much. The only sort of complaint I have about this is it can make your um, like cheap products. It can like make them not as pigmented. But other than that, this is a really good powder. It's like lightweight. It sets. It's not patchy. It doesn't look creepy and horrible. It's all... It's an all round good powder and it is, even though it's like a sort of brightening powder, you can use it all over because it is mostly translucent to be fair. Okay, so the rest of the face, I'm um, going back to the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish powder and I'm going to set the rest of my face with that. Again, this, it's like a little bit dark for me. Um, it might look alright today, we'll see. It did go a bit patchy when I was using it yesterday, so... Hopefully it doesn't do that again. Okay, and using the Bell Hypoallergenic Powder on the other side. I 
feel like these just have a very similar sort of effect. Okay, so moving on to cheeks. For high end, I've got Hoola Light, which I really love. This is one of my favorite bronzers. Um, and I have got, I've got quite a lot of drugstore bronzers that work really well for pale skin. But I was trying to like compare the shades and I feel like this is the closest in shade. I can see, and it's not even a bronzer, but it's the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Powder in the shade uh, Golden Beige. And I feel like this is the closest thing I could see to the shade um, Benefit Hula Light. This one I feel like it's got like, a little bit more yellow in it. But I feel like in terms of like the paleness, they're pretty similar. I feel like this is just the closest I could find in terms of shade. They're both matte, obviously. Similar sort of formula, really, because they're both quite like subtle, buildable bronzers. And I'm pretty sure the L'Oreal True Match powder is still available. I don't think it's discontinued. Um, so yeah, again, if you don't want to spend the money on Hula Light, uh, get a L'Oreal True Match. A couple shades darker than your skin tone if you can find one. use L'Oreal on this side. I like I was struggling to sort of find things that have like a similar sort of like colour to them um, but this is the closest dupe that I could find so I've got the Becca um, Shimmering Skin Perfector in Pearl uh, iconic product I really like it it's a super pretty highlighter uh, the shade looks like this. Uh, the closest dupe I could find in my collection was the Bell Hypoallergenic Face and Body Illuminating Powder in Cool. I don't know, I feel like maybe it looks a bit darker in the pan, but on the face they both have the same sort of kind of like icy, champagne-y sort of colour to them. Um, and they're both pretty much equally as pigmented and nice, so yeah. Again, definitely recommend this Bell highlighter. Go try this if you can access it. Alright, so let's start with Becca on this side. Right, getting all the highlighter off my brush and then we'll use the bell one on the other side it's just as pretty and it does come out basically a similar sort of color once it's on the face i mean let's just compare the drugstore high end is there much difference not really no i feel like definitely in terms of powder products bell hypoallergenic is a really good brand so definitely try their powder products because they've also got a bronzer that's really good that i was tempted to use but i just thought the l'oreal like color matched a bit better uh, so i really struggled with blush um i've only got like two high-end blushes in my collection i've got this ciate one uh which is um i'm not sure what it's called it's like illuminating blush or something the shade is in too deep um uh, it looks like this um the closest dupe i could find i mean it's not a perfect match but um it's sleek antique which i really like it looks like this it does have a little bit of shimmer in it so because I, I obviously wanted something that had a bit of shimmer in it because obviously the ci one is like an illuminating blush it's not an exact color match sleek one's a tiny bit more cool toned but um close enough really because i didn't have a lot to choose from really because i don't have a particularly extensive blush collection all right so let's pop a bit of ciate on this side and then putting a bit of sleek on the other side again. These colours are not identical, but I feel like close enough. I don't feel like you'd notice from afar. <laughs> okay, so for eyebrows, it was like kind of a no-brainer what I was going to do here. Um, so for high end, I've got the benefit giving me brow gel. This is number five. And then my dupe is my e.l.f. Wow Brow Gel. These are both my favourite eyebrow gels. So it kind of made sense that I'd use this as a dupe for this because I love these equally. And I feel like, I mean, they're pretty similar to be honest. And both of them are kind of almost empty. I have got another benefit one, but it's in a slightly lighter shade. This number five suits me a bit more. So I'm just gonna start with benefit and brush this through my brows. I'm gonna use the e.l.f. one. Uh, I'm not sure the shade, I think it's deep brown. Uh, yes, it is deep brown that's written on the top here. Again, this is almost empty. The one that's like a tiny bit different, it's like a little bit longer than Benefit, but it's kind of equally as thin and it works absolutely fine. I guarantee you I'll get a very similar brow with this. I really need to buy a new one of these. I'm 
Whenever I use a brow gel to um, fill in my brows, I always like to use a micro brow pencil just to give a bit more precision. My high-end brow pencil is another benefit one to see precisely my brow pencil. This is a number three. Again, I would have preferred uh, a number five, but um, it was a present that I got, so I didn't get to pick the shade. But I'm not going to complain because it still works really well. My dupe is uh, probably my favourite micro brow pencil, uh, the W7 Stroke of Genius one. Very like kind of soft, easy to work with micro brow pencils that just don't look too harsh. Um, so there you go. Super affordable dupe here. So I'm going to use the Benefit precisely. Just add a bit more definition. Right, and now using W7 Stroke of Genius. Again, I'm not sure the shade. Uh, Ah, oh, dark brown is the shade. There we go. Uh, expensive eyebrow. Cheap eyebrow. Needs a bit of more than that. Give me a second. Yes, overall, pretty similar. Okay, so I'm going to use my highlighter dupes in my inner corner. Okay, so let's finish this lower lash line. Uh, so I'm going to use the same yellow uh, from the Be Perfect palette and put some of that underneath. And I think I'm going to use the uh, pinky red influence and press that closer to the lash line. Back to the Patricia palette using vitamin C and pillow talk again and doing the same thing. Okay, and just gonna put mascara on my bottom lashes on both sides. Okay, so my lip dupe is not 100% perfect here. It's the closest thing I could find because, again, I, I mean, I have a few high end lipsticks, but not a lot really. So I've gone for Max Stone, which is a really nice lipstick. I really like this. I love the shade. Um, I mean, MAC lipsticks aren't like super expensive. I think they're like they're about like 15, 16 pounds, so they're not ridiculously expensive, but I mean, I still consider it high end. Um, uh, my dupe is um, the NYX um, matte, the NYX suede matte lipstick in Munchies. Um, it's a tiny bit lighter, but the tone of it is very similar. Um, so I'm going to put this on, and hopefully it looks somewhat similar. I've not actually tested this properly yet. Um, so I'm going to put Mac on this side of my lips. A lot of shades of the. Um, Suede matte lipsticks from NYX, so there might actually be a closer one, I don't know. Um, but yes, this is Munchies. And it's similar, it's just a tiny bit more nude. So yeah, the NYX one is a little bit lighter, but I think you can kind of see that it's got a same sort of cool undertone to it. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look exactly the same, so um, I don't know. Is there anything I can do to fix that? The only thing I can think of is maybe putting like a tiny bit of concealer over the MAC side. That might be a really bad idea, but you know what? Let's give it a go. Okay, that actually kind of sort of worked a bit. <laughs> it still don't look the same though. All right, so uh, that's everything. I'm just gonna sort my hair out and be back in a sec. So the only high-end setting spray that I have is the Urban Decay All Nighter, and I've got three more setting sprays because I don't have a particularly big collection of setting sprays. Um, they're all drugstore, but they're all like dewy finish sort of ones, and I don't think this is a dewy finish. I don't know, I'm just going to put this on my heart, this half of my face and then I'll just pick something else to put on the other side. There we go. Oh, and it went to the other side. Oh well. That's okay. Uh, I've got to put my uh, Revolution Glass Glow Fix Ultimate Dewy Finish on the other side. It's, it's not a dupe, but... But you know. Some bit sort of on there. Right, so that's it, that's my full face of dupes. I actually think that it has turned out pretty good. I feel like both sides look pretty similar. There's only sort of like minor kind of differences, like the lip colour. Um, I think the eyeshadow looks pretty similar to be fair. Um, I think the base looks really similar. Honestly, it's only the lips really that I feel like looks particularly different. Maybe the shape of my brows is a bit different, but that's the thing. And if I was using the same brow products on both sides, it'd probably still look uneven because my brows are not symmetrical anyway. This has gone pretty well. Um, obviously some of my dupes are better than others. I think my favourite dupes I'd 
recommend would be the Bell Highlighter, the Bell Powder with the MAC Powder, um, the Estee Lauder and the Maybelline Superstay comparison, Benefit Give Me Brow and the Elf Wow Brows, well as the Precisely My Brow Pencil and the W7 Stroke of Genius Pencil, then the eyeshadow palettes, Sigma Eyeliner and the Waterline with the Maybelline Tattoo one, um, yeah a lot of these I think are really good, there's some dupes so yeah, um, I'm actually happy with how this turned out because I actually think both sides look the same, and that was, that was what I was worried about, that both sides wouldn't look the same, um, and they do, so I'm happy about that. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.